my name is Ali Güven Yorukoğlu. I'm a neurosurgeon. I'm uh, the clinical manager of Rivospine uh, from Germany, the company. Uh, I'm responsible for the training and the education program. Are you going to translate also? Okay. Can you translate it? Okay. Yeah. Um, Rivo Spine is a subsidiary of Richard Wolf Company. A hundred percent Richard Wolf owned the company, but only only work on the spine. Yeah, Rivo Spine. Richard Wolf Spine. It means. Rivo переводится как Richard Wolf Spine. Именно конкретная дивизия этой компании, которая занимается чисто спинальными операциями. Okay, let's, uh, the topic is like that today when we are talking about the full, at, about endoscopic surgery, we are talking about full endoscopic technique, not, not the endoscope assisted systems like matrix or something tubular or this kind of things. Endoscope for us is full endoscopic technique. Uh, and uh, let's look at the discoscope first. We have two different endoscopes. Uh, yeah. One of them is the longer one. We use it for transformal approach. The other one is shorter one. As you see uh, in the operation, we use it for interlaminar approach. But and the working channel of both of it is 4.1 millimeter, the working channel, the instrument channel. Then maximum diameter that you can use it 4 millimeter uh, instruments inside this. Okay, uh, let's look at this slide first. It's 25 degree optic we use with the 25 degree and, and the, this is working channel 4.1 camera light source and irrigation channel here. as we talk in the operation we are working with the sleeve the sleeve is a round shape you see here it's the shape of this sleeve is like that yeah. But the optic which we use is oval shaped like this. And then then always you have this space during the operation. That's why this is very important to get outflow. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. If you if you you need to get outflow, we have two possibility to get outflow. One of them is these spaces. The other one is working channel. But if something blocks the working channel, like a piece of this, or if you work with the four millimeter instrument, then you block this. Then you cannot get outflow. By this way, you increase the spinal canal pressure. To prevent this, we, we, this is very important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Another safety for the fluid management for us is the flow, fluid control pumps. With, yeah. we, we just use it in the spine mode. And the spine mode, we don't set up the pressure. The, as we discussed, when you connect the system to the pump and register it, calibrate it with the pump, then the pump recognize the pressure inside the spinal canal. 
then according to that, never allows to rise up from 50. Okay. Uh, another important device for us is the radio frequency device with the tip control. We, you see. And we work with the four megahertz now. Working with the four megahertz, with the high megahertz, high frequency is really important for us because we have a study, we did the study here. We compared the high frequency with the uh, conventional ones. Convention? Conventional ones, uh -huh. 350 kilohertz. And then on the tip, uh -huh. the, the heat is the same. But when you go a little bit around, like 2.5 millimeter, you see the heat r goes down the half with the radio frequency, but the, with the conventional one, still it's really high. That's why you cannot work. You cannot work very close to the structures with the conventional uh, bipolars. We have you have to use the high frequency bipolar to work very close. <laughs> точнее работают, но по сравнению с 350 кГц температура у 4 мегагерц у вас снижается дважды. То есть риск повредить что-то, соответственно, ниже, чем у 350. And we have different types of rangers you've seen in the operation, the scissors, bronzers, punch, angled ones, and the kerosene rongers and deflectable ones. And we have different types of bursts uh, with the system here. Okay, for the indication, uh, endoscopy uh, operations doesn't change the indication. Uh, the indication to diagnose the patient, management, everything is the same with the conventional one. But what we can see, always the question is coming to us, which cases are proper for the endoscopic surgery? It's very clear for us. For lumbar discectomy, we can treat from L1 to S1, interspinal, uh, foraminal, or extraforaminal area. Так, показания и менеджмент для эндоскопических операций он говорит, что это все те же самые показания, что и обычные для обычной эндоскопической гражектомии, но как. То, что отличает эндоскопически, это то, что мы можем удалять крыжа Эг1 до С1, используя вот эти тоски, которые... And uh, let's look at the approaches. We have two standard approach here. One of them is the... Uh, one of them is foraminal approach, the other one is we call it interlaminar approach. And we have, we have three types of uh, transforaminal approach, foraminal approach. We call it lateral transformal, postlateral, and extra That's, I think it's clear, yeah? And then, uh, okay, approach selection, yeah? You can, we know from the world different approaches. We have a lot of colleagues that do their own way, yeah? But with the, with the more than 20 years experience with our system, with our QLAs and our, with our hands, uh, we find the simple and the easiest way, according to us. This is our experience, yeah. And we can recommend only our experience to you. Of course, you can find your way. Yeah. And to, to select according to us, if you want to do transforaminal approach, the foramen has to be free from the lateral side. If there is a iliac crest on the way to the foramen, we don't prefer to do it transforaminal, we prefer to do it interlaminar. And also, if the fragment is over this line and lower this line, then again we prefer to interlaminar approach. These are the main criteria for us, basic main criteria. Для выбора трансформинального доступа является то, что 
Yeah, this line, the, this carnation has to be here. Is if it is migrated or cranially or caudally, then again we prefer to do it interlaminar approach. <laughs> With what is postlateral approach? Postlateral approach, we find the midline and then measure 8 or 10 centimeters to the lateral, then we find the entry point. Then by this way, the working angle is 45 degrees. But we go inside the disc here, you see, inside. It's not easy to go to the ventral part, because there is a facet joint here. If you choose postlateral like that, you have to raise that facet joint to, to reach the spinal canal. Yeah. Okay. And we see the huh? How many centimeters here? Usually eight or ten centimeters. Eight or ten. Yeah. And uh, now ninety nine percent when we do transformal approach we prefer to do lateral transformal approach. Because because of the facet problem to reach the epidural space. Uh, with the lateral transformal approach, we find the entry point according to the anatomical structure, not measure with the measurement. And with this, the working angle is 15 degree, and you can easily reach, without having any problem with the facet joint, you can easily reach the ventral epidural space here. This is good approach for uh, spinal arthrosis. Arthrosis, please. Spinal arthrosis, a large uh, passage. Yes. No. Actually, no? With the, with, if there is a stenosis, we don't prefer to do it transfer. Okay. Because the hypertrophic facets usually compress the traversing nerve root. Means, for example, the hypertrophic facet of L45 always compress the L5 nerve root inside the spinal canal. And to reach the in, to reach here, then you have to reject that part. If you go if you go interlaminar, almost almost 50 or 60 percent of the facet joint. Then we prefer always to come like that, and also. Also, there is a pedicle there, and usually we saw the compression on the caudal side of the recess due to the ped, just medial to the pedicle, and we prefer to reject also the caudal lamina, like a fenestration we have to do. But with the transformal approach, it's not possible to do that. And the, another approach is, we call it extraforamal approach. Sometimes the pathology is located outside, and by this way, for example, if there is a herniation, this herniation changes the position of the uh, nerve root, exiting nerve root. Then you cannot pass here. You have to stay outside. And what we do, we prefer to start in the caudal side here, in the caudal pedicle. <laughs> Mm -hmm. we, we, okay, let's look at the steps. Uh, okay. First, for the lateral transformal approach, we, pref we define two lines here, red line and the green line. Red line is the posterior aspects of the facet joints, and the green line is the posterior tips of the spinal process. 
Федерация, делаем метки, красную и зеленую линию. Красная линия означает задний край фасеточных суставов, а зеленая линия означает задний край And what, what is this? Yeah, the red line. You shouldn't exit this line. This is posterior of the facets. You shouldn't exit the ventral because there is abdomen here. Yeah, this is the limit. That's why it's red. Red is stop. Yeah, you cannot go more anterior. But the green line, and also you cannot use the red line. Above three, three, four level in the upper levels because there is a there is a kidney here, and that's why we defined another line. It's green, and you can use the green line for each level. Yeah. Так, красная линия до нее категорически нельзя переходить, потому что на уровне четыре и пять она означает внутренние органы там. No, 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 it's okay. No? Okay. Uh, then the next step, we define the lines, and the next step we switch to AP view. Then AP view, we change the direction of the angle of the C arm, and then we have to see the end plates parallel, like this by bending. Yeah. Then we mark the interlaminar window. Sorry, the middle of the disc here. Yeah. And then we mark the middle of the disc like this. Uh, so sorry. And cross point of those two lines, lines and the middle of the disc, then we find the entry point. Those two lines, yeah. And, and then, then we, we start with the needle, we insert the needle. Okay. The needle position at the AP view is the medial pedicle line here. AP then when you reach here medial pedicle line you have to reach the annulus also the dorsal part of the annulus yeah. this is the target point of the needle when you place your needle here then we remove the mandrake and guide wire inside Mm. Then over the guide wire, we insert the dilator directly, and then with the hammer, we advance the dilator inside the spinal canal. Again, we, we, the same discussion. If there is a stenosis, then we prefer interlaminar approach. Oh, they're asking uh, if there's a disc uh, seated and foramen. It means that if, uh, it means that it is. Foramenal stenosis yes. due to the disc collapse. No, yes. no. Yes. Yeah. We mean disc collapses. Disc collapses. Yeah. Ah. yeah. To, yes. Due to the disc collapse, if there is a stenotic foramen, yes. then uh, we don't prefer to do it again transforaminal. Right. As we discussed, uh, why, as there is a foramenal stenosis, and if you want to go inside again, if you want to continue with the transforaminal, you have to do extra foramenal approach first. You have to stay at the outside and resect the facet joint and go inside. But we do this just to get access to the spinal canal, not to treat the stenosis, yeah? If there is something inside the spinal canal, like herniation, and if you, want to, if you don't want to do it interlaminar, you want to do it transforaminal, then first you have to resect, 
to get more space in the foramen and then you have to go. Otherwise, the hypotrophic facet or, or the narrow foramen, while you are inserting your dilator, will push your dilator to the cranial side. Yeah? And then you will squeeze the exiting narrow in this situation. To prevent this, we stay outside and re reject the facet joint and get access to the spinal canal. But usually we don't do it, yeah? If there is a collapse and the bilateral foramen of stenosis, then the decompression always not work here. Yeah? You need to ha gain the space with the, with the interbody cages or something like that. Yeah. And then we advance the sleeve uh, dilator and fix it into the foramen. The next step, we insert the uh, sleeve there. And then when we, we, with the hammer, we advance the sleeve and in the final position, here or here, usually we stop here. Uh, then this is the final position of the sleeve, you see. We are not inside the disc now. Okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's clear. And then we start with the endoscope. When you place the endoscope, the first picture is like this. Yeah? There will be the horizontal fibers here, epidural space and the disc space. You see the tip of the sleeve is not inside the disc. This is lateral transferal approach. The other one is posterolateral. You go inside the disc. But we want to go epidural space because the herniation is there. Yeah? Is it clear? And can we proceed? Yeah. Okay. And the next step, we cut one piece from the PLL and then shrinks the PLL. Then we have space, more space into that, and then we find the fragment in front of us. Again, this space, PLL, posterior longitudinal ligament, and this herniation here. You find the herniation in front of you. Posterior longitudinal ligament. Okay. How we do it? Let's look at the video. Horizontal fiber, this is posterior longitudinal ligament, epidural space, this space. We cut one piece and go inside. Again, we go like this. Then the last layer here, when you cut it, you see. Then you find the herniation here. No, this is not PLL. This is PLL. PLL. This space, posterior longitudinal ligament, and also this is the fragment here. Yeah. Like this, then we remove the fragment. When you remove the fragment, you see the rest of the PLL here, epidural fat tissue, and now the flower located medial to the facet joint. Yeah, you don't see it. The root is behind the fat tissue here, the traversing now root. Then exiting now root, we already passed it. Mm. We are inside the spine canal now. But to, to see the now root here, you have to dissect the fat tissue. Professor, mm -hmm. uh, how we fa can avoid uh, damage of structures if we have uh, abnormal anatomy, for example, uh, scoliosis and something. Uh, then you have to correct your C arm position and according uh, to the C. If, if we use a uh, uh, lateral approach and with a uh, 15 angle, uh, angle uh, we can avoid uh, to damage uh, nerve and, uh, uh, and uh, also other structure. Is it right? Yeah, you have to care about the foramenal size here. No. Yeah, if there is a, if there is a scoliosis, rotoscoliosis, yeah, yeah. and you have to check the foramenal size with the sagittal images first. Mm -hmm. If you see very narrow due mm -hmm. to the scoliosis, mm -hmm. then it's not good to do it transforminally. Oh. It's the basic principles. You have to see the foramen really large and the space in the caudal side of the foramen. You need a space in the caudal side of the foramen to go. If you don't have space in the caudal side of the foramen, then it's dangerous, of course. And the uh, uh, first step is uh, 
when we when we go to the by the X-ray or C arm and uh, without visualization, without endoscope, uh, we 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 just start to uh, operate and uh, it's so uh, little bit difficult for us and for me and uh, uh, for that reason uh, I could have something something wrong, uh, maybe abnormal. Uh, then it's better. It's yeah. then it's better to attack with the easiest case, not the scoliosis uh -huh. case. You don't need to treat the scoliosis yeah. case with the transformal approach no, at the beginning. It, yeah, it was a just yeah. It is it this kind of cases is always advanced cases, and then when you get the experience, you can do this. Yeah, at the beginning, always start with the easiest one. Then when you get the experience, you can do the rest. I think, yeah, like every kind of surgery, mm -hmm. and then okay, uh, when you dissect the fat tissues. Then you see the nerve root here, yeah. But for the operation, you don't need to see it, yeah, because we already removed the herniation, and if you see the free floating of the PLL, then it's okay for patient. You don't need to dissect that, because there are a lot of adhesions and veins here. You can create the bleeding and damage on the root, and unnecessary because there is nothing here. You remove the herniation. корешок сам по себе, но туда уже лезть особо не надо. И если мы увидим, что первая связка она так свободно болтается, то значит у пациента все хорошо. Mm -hmm. This is extraforaminal approach. As you see here, the pathology is located outside, and here you can identify the exiting nerve root, but here you cannot. Then you don't know where is the root here. That, that's why you cannot pass the foramen. What we have to do, we have to start from here, from the caudal side, the junction of the pedicle to the ascending facet. And what we do, we find the entry point again, and we place our needle on the bone. The junction of pedicle and the ascending facet, because we know that the root is coming like that. This is the farthest way, and the safe. Yeah, it's the far from the exitic nerve root and the safe because the, there is nothing here. The root always goes to the anterior, not the posterior like that. That's why we place the needle here. Pedicle and the faucet junction. Okay. Yeah, it's, clear. It's, it's clear. Yeah, we placed here. And then, again, mandrain and dilator and everything, we, we stack the operation and we dissect the anatomy under our visual control, then we find the extraforaminal herniation here. But, of course, to treat extraforaminal pathologies with the endoscope is the really good solution for the patient, but the challenging part is uh, it's the most difficult operation for the surgeons, uh, most difficult endoscopic operations for the surgeons. Yeah. And also, if you want to do bone drilling, we have two possibilities here. One of them is we have a, this set, manual drill set. It's reusable. You don't need to sterile it. Uh, sorry, it's not a disposable. It, you, you, you can sterile it. And there, is, there are rimmers there. And to rim the uh, caudal side of the foramen, they call it foramenoplasty or foramenotomy or something like that. And the other possibility, you can start with the extra foramenal and with the endoscope, and you can use the tip control deflectable uh, burst. That when you press this one, the tip is deflected like that, and you can easily reject the bone under your visual control. And how we do it? We do it under fluoroscopy. We place the needle, guide wire, and step dilators. The first smaller one, middle one, and the biggest one. We put the dilator there. 
and then again over the smallest diameter, smallest sleeve. Then you change it, you dilate it, and finally, at the final, you drill it under the fluoroscopy. Yeah? Then you create a space in the foramen to get access into the spinal canal. Yeah. Uh -huh. like green, these are the diameters, yeah. Green, blue, and uh, step by step you use them, and then you drill it, and then you find it. The, yeah, yeah. While you're changing the T handle of the drill, you just cut the caudal side of the foramen here. Again, we do this just to have a space to go in. It doesn't mean that you decompress the root here. Because we, we work in the caudal side. Yeah. Another option is the deflectable one. When you press this button, the tip is deflected like this. This is shaver. This is burr. Yeah. And how we do it? Again, the extra foraminal approach. Sorry. Yeah. With endoscope. And then you press the button. And then you can cut the facet joint like this, yeah? Mm. This is pedicle, and then this is facet joint. You don't need to change the direction of the optic. Just press it and rotate, you see? Yes. You need experience to do that. Yeah, it's of course safe. Yeah. Uh, before the interlaminar approach, uh, if if you're okay, I would like to then show you one real cases. Yeah. Huh? Is that okay? Do we have them? Um... Okay, let's look at this case. Okay. You see the herniation is almost on the disc level. It's not caudal and a little bit caudal, but it's enough. It's in the, between the indication criteria. And also, if you look at to the foramen here, it's free. This is in the, between the indication criteria of transformal approach and really good to start with this approach. Yeah. Transformal approach. And before we start with the live search, we, I will give you a short introduction of the patient. We had a, a young woman, 30 years, with a sciatic pain since now a little bit more than uh, three weeks. And since um, two days, she has also weakness of the muscle of the five nerve. And uh, that was the reason for her to us to um, give us the possibility to perform an operation. It's because of the weakness, three or five, we decided for the operation. And um, we talked about this in the first lecture, you have to plan your operation. We have here the herniation at level L45, that means you have to look at the indication criteria, especially the height of the crest, so it seems that there's no problem. And we saw the uh, lateral um, X-ray pictures, uh, we have a large um, neuroframen. And plan the operation exactly, that means, look here, we have a little sequestration to the core elastic of the spinal canal, but it is uh, still um, inside our indication criteria. We see the pathology is in the, in the middle nearly of the spinal canal. Here we have the active nerve root which we can pass, so it shouldn't be a big problem, but we will see what will this happen is, between the operation. This is exiting now root, and you have R space R here R to go in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We have some questions. Uh, don't hesitate to use the microphone to ask it to come directly, or I don't know. Yeah. But I think you'll explain it very well. Okay, we just have a short look around to see the complete setup. We have the patient on the table in front position, uh, two rows on the chest and uh, ear crest, just uh, um, to have the stomach relaxed. Um, then we have the um, instruments here, um, radio frequency, um, light source, uh, endoscope, uh, camera, and the pump. And uh, below that we have the uh, drill unit, um, but we will, I think we will uh, need it here for this case. So first thing what we start with is the, uh, uh, is the approach, the planning of the approach, and we start in the lateral CM position, 
find the, the lines now. Uh, cranial bears, the head, uh, right side uh, of the feet. Uh, so we start uh, to mark our entry point, um, L45. The posterior, posterior part of the facet, part of the facet joint. joint. There's our first line. Red line. Yes. Red line, yeah. The sequestration is in the midline. That's and why we, we go AP. more lateral. And as I told you, we have to have an orthograde great view of the level that we want to operate. That means this is the normal view. Then so you right. see the level L34 is in the orthograde way. Level L45, we have to tilt the C arm a little bit. When you tilt, yeah, you see so parallel. Now it is again also great to see. I pull the see a little bit to my side to see the ear crest, but the ear crest is low enough. Then just the middle of the of the uh, intervertebral space, and then we have a cross point here, and that is our area where we perform the skin incision. Line and the line, we find the entry point. So skin incision. And we're Now we insert the needle. The assistant uh, keeps his hands on the muscles of the patient if there's any reaction while we perform the approach. I'm going to compress the vision. So we insert. Insert the needle, and we. I see a resistance here. Always, it's good at the beginning so to I'm stay in, in the caudal side to avoid the damaging the root. And we have to check where we are in the lateral CM position. Now we see we are dorsal. Yeah, because the root is here, and still you are in the far. Yeah. That means I have to correct my needle about uh, one centimeter to the uh, ventral aspect to get access to the foramen. So I pull it back a little bit, angle it up. Uh, now uh, I'm here at the medial particle line, in the caudal part of the foramen. And we didn't Just pass it, because we no, no, don't know the position of the needle now. You go in further on uh, when you are entering the uh, Spani canal, okay, and I'm here in the dorsal, nearly dorsal part of the annulus. This is okay. I feel resistance here already. So one, two millimeters more inside than I'm at, at the medial pedicle line. So now I feel I'm in the disc here. Removal of the mandra, and then we introduce the guy wire. Be careful, the guy wire is flexible. That means um, when we introduce the guard wire and then we try to push over the dilator and make sure that it is not bending because when it's once time bended you are not able to push the uh, dilator further over the banded part and either you push the complete guide wire into the patient um, but um, normally it is not possible to overgo this banded part uh, with the dilator and then you have to remove everything and start again so I put in the um, guide wire and the needle comes out the guide wire stays in the patient. Yeah. And then we introduce the dilator. It's the same the dilator with the interlaminar approach. No change. Make sure that you really keep the direction of the of the guide wire. Then we pull out the guide wire, and the rest is done with a hammer. So now it's quite fixed here. Now we've passed the exiting, exiting nerve root. Exiting nerve root is like that. Now we introduce the um, bevel operation cavula, opening first to the ventral aspect. Reason for that is the exiting nerve root is like that. That means we protect a little bit better the exiting nerve root when we rotate it, it to the ventral aspect. The handle here marks always the tip of the bevel operation canyon. That means when it's inside the patient, you are not able to identify in which direction it is rotated. So uh, due to the 
uh, yeah. handle, you always know in which uh, direction your tip is and in which direction your opening is. So first, insertion with the tip to the dorsal aspect, opening to the ventral aspect. We Passing use the interlaminal the opposite. Yeah. So now I feel resistance, that's a passive no, no, point here. Handle. And then under slight uh, pressure, I do a rotation 180 degrees towards the pedicle, that means here to the right side. And during this maneuver, I already, I already slip into the foramen. Now we push the uh, cannula in the same position as the dilator before. The root is here. You already passed so the root now. now. The done. And we are in the middle pedicle and line. The other root is here. The endoscope. And I will just give you an overview about the anatomy first, and then we will see what happens with the venation. Uh, maybe I just show you this uh, here before the operation. This is the most uh, important instrument. This is the radio frequency probe. Uh, this is semi-active, that means by pressing here, the curved electrode comes out and I can rotate it in every uh, direction. And this is my index finger in the patient for mobilization, um, for um, coagulation, and uh, for palpation. Okay. The endoscope, you will see, you can see it in the booth and in the practical part. Um, so I just introduced now the endoscope. The same shape, but the long. Uh, PLL is here in this case. This is the capsule of facet joint, probably. Because the herniation is above the PLL. You see the horizontal fibers now. These are the vessels, the epidural space, and the PLL here. Here. This is passage joint. We operate on the left side, that means the left is cranial, the right is portal. Here's the disc. So that should coagulate very well the vessel, so that it's not starting to bleed too hard. Now we cut the PLL to go to the herniation. Here you see something there, the white one. It's an What is the root? Hmm? Root. Which root? Traversing? Yeah. What is the root? You will see that. You will see that. If you go a little bit cranial, to the posterior, sorry, you will see it. Here's something in front of us, so just
Then you see the Now I cut into the herniation, and as I told you, when I want to cut in something, and open it, I cannot see what I'm doing. By rotation of the endoscope, I see what I'm cutting. So now I'm you see the root there? This one? This one? So rotation here, and cutting into the herniation. Again, neurostructure, cranial, portal, donation, posterior ligament. We are working outside of the disc. Can we change? No. Why? You don't need to protect here, yeah. you, you just see it and you take it out. Now you see the floating, the moment of the epidural area, and then this is the sign of decompression. Just check a little bit for the smaller pieces, and also you have to check inside the disc a little bit for the free fragments. Almost done, yeah. This is the, if you see this fly, fracture, it's okay. Then, of course, at the end, if you want to see the exiting nervous, and proceed a little bit. So, the decompression is uh, done. You see um, the only thing what I try is now to go into the here's a defect to the disc, so I go into the disc now and uh, so I can go into the disc. Problems that you may have uh, adhesions. So what I can show you uh, is the situation I described when we are searching for the exiting nerve root. 
rotate. Now you pendulum, rotate the endoscope to the cranial aspect. Now he, he is looking to the cranial aspect now. This is the cranial side of the foramen. This is caudal side. We use this. If you dissect that fat tissue, you will find the exiting now up there. This fat tissue is We are in the left side, cranial side, caudal side now, dorsal and the disc space. That's the way how you can do that. Uh, after normal operation, and decompression, and you can practice it. Now be careful, sometimes you have really uh, little small arteries here that may bleed. So now I have to fix the whole system with my left hand. Make sure that, it, uh, that uh, I don't slip. This is fat tissue around the root. Usually it's not good, very good to dissect that, it's good protection, yeah, but just to demonstrate. Yes, he wants to demonstrate. Here comes the exiting vertebrae, yeah? So this is the exiting vertebrae. And we are here in the way to the exiting vertebrae. Yes, this is... Another thing what you can do, so I, I, I finish now the operation, yeah? Because uh, decompression is done. The ped That's the ped pedicle ped here. And that's an pedicle. There we start normally the, ex uh, the extra framer approach. That's the pedicle here. That's the ascending facade. That's the entry to the... Spinal canal, you see the decompressed new structure. And when you want to make sure that you don't see the monkey section here, yeah, okay. that you don't went through the kidney. Yeah, it's joke, yeah. Follow it's not true, yeah, it's joke. It's joke, yeah. We don't pass through the kidney, yeah. Okay, <laughs> Okay. Uh, is it better to have a break, small break, or continue with the interlaminar one? Break, huh? Which one do you prefer? Or continue with the interlaminar? Yeah. Huh? We know the approach, yeah. You've seen the case in the morning. You know what is there. It's familiar to you. Uh, the same approach with the microscope. But the challenging part is here, the handling. <coughs> with the transformal approach, the anatomy is different for us, the approach is different, but the system is fixed there. You don't need to hold it. Yeah. But with the interlaminar, you need to control everything. But you know the anatomy. Yeah. Okay, interlaminar approach uh, developed by Dr. Rutten from Herne, uh, which we are working together. Uh, the approach is the same from the posterior. When you open it, yeah, we, I will go to fast here, yeah. And then you see the root, caudaquina, axilla, and the shoulder. You've seen in the case, yeah, it's the same. The first step, we start with the straight AP. Now, we don't bend this here. Because we want to see the interlaminar windows here. Okay? We need the window now, not the disc or something like that, to go in. Okay? Then we mark this point. We don't use this to mark the line. We just try to find the tip. And here, always we mark as medial as possible, but not on the midline, because you can stuck with the ligament here, just lateral to the midline. And it's, by this way, it's very important to come from medial to lateral, because there is a facet joint here. If you mark the lateral point, then you will have problem with the facet. Not to have problem with the facet, we mark from medial to lateral and you can easily reach the ventral epidural space here. 
здесь мы идем от медианной стороны класса разные, так чтобы не отводить подсеточные а, суставы и легко дойти до And the next we do incision and directly dilator. And then we prefer to put the dilator on the bone. And then we switch to lateral position. You need to check the position of the dilator here. It's outside. Then we 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 play we introduce the working sleeve after that. Always the working sleeves opening is looking through the medial aspect now. Then we start with the endoscope. Approach is really easy here. The first step you see the muscles and you we clean them and then we find the flavum ligament and then we find the flavum and try to open it from medial to lateral always medial to lateral not me lateral to medial because it's like that and the roots are everything is like that if you open from here maybe you can catch some part to open the medial but we you can come from medial to lateral like this how we do it again press a little bit to the down and stretch the flower always we stretch the flower and then we cut and then we find the uh, epidurals then we put the back side of the scissor then cut it to the lateral Always medial to lateral. Otherwise, you can catch something here. Then you see the facet joint and the rest. Then what we do, we remove the fat tissues and try to find the root here. And then we retract the root and press the sleeve down. Yeah? Then rotate the sleeve clockwise or opposite to clockwise. Both is available here. Then we protect the nerve root behind. How we do it? We retract the root to the medial here. Then press the cannula down. And always we keep uh, the eyes on edge, not to squeeze it and rotate it. Then we rotate it. It's well designed here. Yeah. I never seen any problem. Of course, you can have problem, but you have to press the sleeve down and rotate it. But it's very safe, yeah. Then we continue with the herniation. When you open the herniation like that, the piece is coming out. Like this. And you can take them piece by piece, and the water will take them out. Yeah. But sometimes it's really big, that not fits to the working channel. Then what we do? with the big fragment, then we ask, no, we ask our assistant to keep the system and we take out like this, with the system, yeah? Okay. You do need a system. Yeah. And then when you see the floating like this, it's free, then it's okay. Yeah. This is the steps of, basic steps of interlaminar approach. And you can do also a bone resection with the uh, different types of burrs and everything here. This is another uh, topic, uh, stenosis. It's a little bit advanced. Now I would like to proceed with the, uh, with the one real case again. Okay, maybe you can explain that. But in general, uh, what size of, of the herniation should be uh, for the incision and the incision? Size is not important for us. Yeah. You seen today it was really big herniation, yeah. almost fill all the space, but we can remove it. We have scissor, pines and everything. Yeah. Again. So this now is we start now with the first this one is well, I don't know.
Also die Verbindung zum OP. Okay. Von meiner Seite aus alles bestens. Okay. Then we start with the uh, with the case. Um, just to give you an um, impression of that, um, we have a um, herniation located on the right side here. Actually, always we recommend you to start with these kind of cases. Big interlaminar window, as you see, and very small herniation. Then it will be much more easier at the beginning to remove it. If you start like the, pre the morning uh, case, then you need to work a lot. Uh, maybe you can leave something rest. But always start with the big interlaminar window and the small uh, herniations. In the sagittal planes and transversal planes, um, and uh, the interlaminar window um, is feasible. Um, so um, especially that we should look for for the interlaminar window in the AP uh, radiogram. Um, okay, we can follow the operation. Okay, also from from the imaging. It's Dr. Uh, Rutten from Hanna. A standard case L5 is one. But you know, also for the transfer, we thought it is a standard case. You can say it only after the operation, if it was a, an easy case or if there were... I would like to mention a little bit about this one. There is a back connected with the drip. Then the water goes into the back and you can put suction in it. Yeah, It's very useful for endoscopic operation. Difficult case. So for the interlaminar case, um, you know, we have a patient positioned also in prone position with a flat um, divalodic um, lumbar spine. We're starting with an AP view. Uh, and we see already now, in opposite to the standing X-rays, that the interlaminar window looks much better. We, when you bend it, so you will see now how big I it is now. Yeah? The skin incision. In this case, just in the middle of the interlaminar window, in craniocaudal direction, but as medial as possible. But be careful not to go between the spinous okay, process, just a little bit lateral of the spinous process. Then skin incision, and I like also, if the patient is not so weak, <coughs> to cut the fascia. You feel that. Especially in thin patients, don't go too deep because you can cut the plasma ligament immediately. Then we put in the dilator, and I feel already on the ground that I touch something, control in AP view, and uh, see my approach to the interlaminar window. So then we switch to the lateral view. Okay, it's a good position. Then the cannula. Mm. Dr. Kong told you for the transferable approach that the handle was in opposite to the opening. Here in the interlaminar approach, we have the handle at the same side as the opening. That's a, due to technical conditions, yeah, because holding the endoscope, we need this hand for holding this endoscope, we need this handle on this side. The opening is to the medial aspect, that means to the flavum ligament. So then the approach is done. And we switch to the endoscope. Muscles in front of you. Now we need to find the flower. So first, I try to preparate the flavum ligament in front of me. This white thing, what you are seeing there, is already the ligament. He is using the rongeur, yeah, very fast, but it's so rongeur. When I push all the time the cannula a little bit down to avoid that soft tissue is coming again in front of you. So um, at nine o'clock we have caudal. We operate the right side. At nine o'clock we have caudal, three o'clock cranial, 
Take the clock lateral. So it remains 12 o'clock, that's a medial, yeah? So that's a flavum ligament. We check or we checked in the X-ray that our direction is correct. And then we start to open the flavum ligament. The same like for the transparent approach. When I put in the instrument, I cannot see what I'm doing, so I have to rotate the endoscope. So I opened it already. Now I use the cannula to stretch the flavum ligament. Yeah? Check again in X-ray uh, okay. again. Okay, direction is correctly to the disc space. So here lateral, the fat tissue we see is from the joint. That is the deep layer of the flavum ligament. The deep layer inside has the medial margin of the ascending facet. Here is the superficial layer with inside at the medial aspect of the descending facet. So I cut the deep layer. Right, hmm? right side, uh, yeah. the cranial the side, caudal yeah, side, the and middle. And that side. here is the novia from the joint, So here you see the joint. That's the ascending facet, the medial margin of the ascending facet, where the deep layer of the flavum ligament inserts, and here the descending facet. Okay, here the joint. Share. If I want to, so here I reach the medial margin of the ascending facet. If I want to go more lateral, I have to go more cranial because you know here's the tip of the ascending facet, and when you are cranial of the tip of the ascending facet, I can go more lateral. Now, it's not necessary here, but just for demonstration. Okay. Also, cranial more lateral. So next step is um, preparing the new structures. We do that all the time, yeah? I want to see the new structures, definitely, and the recess. I think to identify exactly the, later, the lateral margin of the neural structures mm -hmm. is an important step to avoid damaging. So it's now for example, I have here in front of me Dura or something, yeah? But I don't know, is it the nerve root or is it the dura of the cord equina? That means I do not know exactly. Do I'm working lateral of all new structures, also of the traversing nerve root, or I'm in the axilla and maybe the traversing nerve root is here lateral. In this case, we see everything, but in, in a lot of other cases. So, first look medial. And for example, here we see. Mm, This structure ends here medial. That can only be the nerve. So I'm sure that I'm here lateral of all new structures and I can manipulate the new structures medially without problems and I can work it without risk of damaging uh, the traversing nerve. But if we don't see that here, maybe we have to preparate more medial of the fat tissue here? until we see also here there are some the small vessels yeah? of the veins. So before I mobilize the new structures medially, if it's possible, we coagulate the blood vessels here, bonjour, and we see already here adhesions between the nerve and the fat tissue, that is in all cases of, of uh, these herniations, 
when they are a little bit older. So now I go in with the cannula, rotate the cannula, photo, and we see here this structure that is the herniation. Yeah? It's not free, it's covered by the rest of the PLL. Uh, before I open it, from a photo, uh, I prepare everything very well. So now I look calmly. Here we look in the foramen already. Now I open the PLL or the covering here of the herniation. So I reject the sequestered material. Now we see the annulus here, and that is the PLL. That's here, huh? Yeah. yeah. Already the operation finished. The rest is just uh, to look around and cut a little bit. Um, you see, if, the if you have a small herniation, then it's very easy with the big interlamina window. Just rotate, mm -hmm. cut it, and take it out. That's enough. But if you have big herniations like the morning, then you have to work more. Yeah, that's why always we recommend you big interlaminar window, L5 S1 always for to start and the small herniations like that. Cranial or caudal sequestration? Of course you can do it, but at the beginning, before getting the handling, yeah, it's better to stay on the disc level. Otherwise, you need to look cranial, caudal, you, it's really easy, you can do it later, but to start, our recommendation is on the disc level. That you can easily do it. Uh, do you have videos how to do it? Like oh, it's, it's not with me now. Oh. It's not with me. But we don't go to the flower, we just go to the bone and dissect the adhesions between the bone and the adhesions and then go inside the spinal canal like this. So, like the previous uh, approach, you do the same? No. It's like that. There is no flavum with the open surgery. Yeah. yeah. After the open surgery, because yeah. usually they cut it. Then we go to the. We find the bone first, not the flavum. That we find the bone, and then we dissect the adhesions uh, between the scar tissue between the bone and the scar tissue, and we go there. Mm. Like open surgery, what you do there? Yeah, we find it. But I do not have with me. Yeah. Yeah, maybe this is the yeah. This is the final position. Hello. Almost the same. You see. In my opinion, we can finish here. Yeah? My opinion. Is that <laughs> yeah. Are there any burning questions? To Dr. Ritten? No, there's no PLL here. Yeah, it's. You, you see the floating of the structures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.